Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcasting to you from Jerusalem and in today's headlines. Iran concludes negotiations with Russia on delivery of the advanced surface-to-air S-300 systems. Hundreds of Libyan tribal leaders meet in Egypt's capital Cairo with Egyptian authorities hoping to enlist their help in preventing Islamist violence from spilling over their shared border. Israel former President Shimon Peres says a clear majority of Israelis favor a two-state solution to the conflict with the Palestinians. Iran announced it concluded negotiations with Russia on the delivery of the long stalled deal on delivery of the S-300 surface-to-air missile system, which according to the agreement, should take place within a short period. In response to the Iranian announcement, Russia reiterated its policy in which it considers the maintaining of regular Russian-Iranian dialogue as very important. However, Moscow was not willing to confirm nor deny the Iranian statement. According to the Islamic Republic, the advanced rocket systems would possibly arrive in Iran by the end of 2015. The decision to deliver the advanced surface-to-air missiles have raised concerns among Western countries, whom stress that such sales do not help the conclusion of a final agreement with Tehran on its nuclear program. Meanwhile, Israel expressed the fear that the sale would reinforce the aggressiveness of the Islamic Republic in the region. Now to Israel's eastern neighbor, where hundreds of Libyan tribal leaders met in Egypt's capital Cairo, with Egyptian authorities hoping to enlist their help in preventing Islamist violence from spilling over their shared border. Islamists have thrived in the chaos of Libya, a North African oil producer that now has two competing governments backed by armed factions that four years earlier joined in an uprising that toppled autocrat Muammar Gaddafi. المجتمع الدولي الحقيقة ينظر للأمر وكأن هناك فئتان من الشعب متصارعات لا الأمر يختلف تماما هذا صراع سياسي على السلطة ولكن الشعب في ذاته في الشعب اللي بروح في القاعدة الأساسية هو شعب ونسيج اجتماعي واحد وإن اختلف في أعراقه ولهجاته Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi sees ascendant Islamists in Libya as a major security threat and is trying to secure the cooperation of tribal leaders to tackle it. Analysts say CC would like Arab states to carry out a Yemen-type intervention in Libya to combat jihadist fighters who pledge allegiance to the supreme leader of the Islamic State of Iraq and Levant, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, as well as other radical Islamic factions that have taken advantage of the lawlessness to recruit and train in the vast desert country. الاجتماع في مصر الحقيقة لأسباب كثيرة جدا بسبب الانفلات الأمني الكبير في في ليبيا عدم قدرة القبائل أن تجتمع في منطقة داخل ليبيا لأن هناك بعض الفتن اللي يزرعها الإرهابيين ويزرعوها الأعداء أجندات الأجندات الخارجية. Egyptian Foreign Minister Samir Shoukri inaugurated the tribal conference, which runs through tomorrow, Thursday, by highlighting the positive role that tribes could play in restoring stability to Libya. Egypt had invited the tribal leaders to talk because they were the so-called backbone of society and the main guarantor of Libyan stability, security and territorial integrity. <laughs> إنني لا أبالغ في الخول بأن أنظار العالم تسلط اليوم عليكم تنتظر توحيد كلمتكم تتطلع لدوركم الهام في تحقيق الاستقرار في كافة ربوع ليبيا تنتظر منكم المساهمة الفعالة في تحقيق الاستقرار الأمني على الأرض وممارسة دور مجتمعي من خلالكم بدعوة الشباب الليبي لترك السلاح Achieving consensus among the hundreds of tribal leaders on how to tackle Islamic extremism could be a long process. 
Libya's two governments depend on various tribes and militias to support their claim to power. The country's internationally recognized government, which Egypt backs, has operated out of eastern Libya since a rival armed faction called Libya Don seized the capital Tripoli in August and set up its own government. Analysts say most of the tribes in attendance in Cairo were known supporters of the internationally recognized government, with supporters of its Tripoli-based rival not well represented. The conference in Libya comes following statements made by Egypt's president Abdel Fattah el-Sisi over the weekend, in which he stressed that Middle Eastern leaders must defeat extremism by giving their citizens a sense of hope for the future. The Egyptian president made the comments as he addressed the World Economic Forum over the weekend on the Middle East and North Africa in Jordan. <laughs> بمختلف صورها وبالتالي فإن جهودنا للقضاء على التطرف والإرهاب لابد أن تتوكب معها مساع نحو مستقبل تملأه الحرية والمساواة والتعددية More than 800 leaders from government, business and civil society attended the two-day event over the weekend which hopes to promote growth and development in the region, much of which is currently beset by conflict and turmoil. During the conference, Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas said the Middle East was at a pivotal moment in its history. التي تشهد حالة من الصراعات تحت شعارات مختلفة أشعلت نيران الفتنة الطائفية والتعصب الديني في بعض الدول وأنتجت حالة من الفوضى والفشل في دول أخرى قد يعرض كل منها لخطر التقسيم Israel's former president, Shimon Peres, also attended the conference, during which he proclaimed that a clear majority of Israelis favor a two-state solution to the conflict with the Palestinians. The elder Israeli statesman noted that a restart to the peace talks could resume, calling on both the Israeli and Palestinian leadership to return to the negotiating table as quickly as possible, in a bid to find a solution that would make peace possible. Peres explained that there were times when it seemed that peace with Jordan and Egypt were a dream, adding that it is by virtue of the peace treaties with those two countries that Israel lives alongside its neighbors and overcomes the complex challenges of the Middle East. Now to other news, an Israel Airlines plane was confiscated in Lisbon last night following claims by Euro-Atlantic Airways that the Israeli airliner owes it tens of millions of euros. According to reports, the seizure of the plane led to the cancellation of a flight from Eilat to central Israel, leaving dozens of passengers stranded in Israel's most southern city. According to Portuguese media reports, Euro-Atlantic CEO Tomás Matelo confirmed that the seizure had occurred because of past debts, noting that the seizure of the aircraft was legal following a court order. Israel CEO Uri Sirkin said he was surprised by the Portuguese move as legal proceedings are still ongoing as his company appealed the court's decision. Thank you for watching us. You can also watch us at tv7israelnews.com or tv7.fi. For any comments, please send your emails to israelnews at tv7.fi. For more updates from Israel and the region, please join our Facebook page at TV7 Israel News. Praying for the peace of Israel and the peace of Jerusalem. I'm Jonathan Hassan of Erev Tov, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.